I am here today with Associate Professor Dr. Zach Sean from the University of Sunshine Coast in Queensland. And we are so grateful to be here with you today, just talking about some of the areas where there is hope and momentum in the field of MECFS. And my first question for you, if someone asked you what has changed in MECFS science in the last year, what would you point to? I probably would say the biggest change is the scale and the credibility. Uh, a standout example probably would be the Decode ME genetic study from uh, University of Edinburgh, about uh, 15,000 people, which uh, reported eight genetic differences linked to ME cephas. So this uh, links towards the immune function and neural signals, although um, one, it's not a diagnostic test yet because people without ME surface can only carry this difference or variants, but they do point to um, the ME surface is biological and it's measurable and uh, point us to uh, the new email and the brain links. That's probably, I would say. What gives you hope, you know, for you personally, when you're working in a field where there's so many barriers and funding gaps, what are the things that give you hope and kind of keep you going? I, I, I have to admit, I first uh, exposed or I first started the ME surface research by accident. But then what kept me working in this area is my patient participants keep me hopeful. And um, as a researcher scientist, I frequently have received the emails and uh, conversations that actually um, remind me why I came to office, why I'm doing this research, or you know why I want to spend my time and uh, digging in those data or collecting data. And also sci scientifically, the hope I probably would say come from the data itself, like uh, like the last example we just talked, you know, um, nowadays we get more and more data collected and we start to collaborate. And I, I love hearing too about the things that do encourage the scientists in our field, because I think that that is something that sometimes from the patient side, we don't necessarily think about. And so there's a lot of that, okay, how do we get specialists to enter our field? How do we get people to focus on MECFS? But sometimes that human element of just, why don't we tell our researchers and scientists when we appreciate their work, I think makes a big difference as well. So thank you for sharing that. Let's just say that you were able to get double the funding or more, you know, more than that. What would you study next? I probably would um, scale up as a multi side study that can combine the, because I'm doing the brain MRI, doing the uh, neuroimaging uh, part, I hope I can combine the MRI and blood biomarks with continuous portable monitors. That means we will have the um, brain MRIs and blood biomarks and um, um, some smart sensor data. The, re the rationale behind that is, as you probably uh, can appreciate, brain MRI gave us um, a unique or no one can provide, the, no other tools can provide to really look the brain structures and how brain function, but to apply it to daily clinic is still that we, let's be honest, still have some uh, gaps, not every, you know, GP or every general practice or family clinic can say, okay, I want to do a brain MRI. I want to do this um, sophisticated, advanced brain MRI. So what I'm, my research now is, okay, we have those brain MRI findings, can we combine with smart sensors and bio, biomarks eventually, whatever um, 
we found can apply to a real patient without MRI data. Because for research, we can collect um, rich phenotype data. And we already have this rich phenotyping data for research purpose. But then build on those, we can apply to a new single patient with the less or probably just one or two, let's say smart sensor or biomark or blood biomark, those data, not necessarily you have to have the reach because then we can build on that and just use the for real life or daily clinic, we can just use one or two mortalities. So what I'm hearing is that you're essentially thinking, okay, so if there was extra funding, you'd be able to afford the types of machines needed to get this data across multiple sites, being able to bring in more sources of data from all over the country or kind of internationally if needed, and then connecting that data to people being able to give you sensor data coming in continuously or over time and kind of putting all those pieces together so that you can then make those connections between here's what we're seeing on the brain scans, here's what we're seeing on the MRIs, and here's what we see reflected in the sensors and the data that's coming through from there so that you can then almost reverse engineer it for patients um, and, and kind of get that more precision medicine approach. Is that right? Yes, exactly. So a lot of the work we do here at Solve is with policymakers and legislators. And I'm curious about what you would say if you were in a room with policymakers about why it is so important. I probably would say MESFS, it, it's a disabling and also um, a lot of time uh, strike people off uh, of work, study and family lives. And um, the economic and social cost is uh, very, very high. And at this time, um, particularly at the, uh, those years, we have this unprecedented um, momentum because of long COVID and the, um, and the other, of course, I mean, said, together we have this I never have it in history before this unprecedented momentum. Um, have the scientists and the large cohort and uh, new translational tools um, to do this study. So continue this investment now is high value because, um, you know, now we have this momentum and while we have this momentum, we solve this problem. And uh, rather than if we cut in the funding now, it would be a penny wise, but you know, pound foolish because you already build this continuous support. We may be may able to uh, solve the, you know, the MSF as mysteries. So I'm hearing that essentially we have already built the infrastructure and we've finally gotten to the point where the researchers are there, the tools to look into what's really happening with ME-CFS are there. And we're really just at this pivotal point where we need that government funding to step in and fill those gaps for us so we can push it over the edge now that all the pieces are in place. If you were to share anything about your research or the work that you are personally doing that you really would, would like to communicate to the patient community, what, what else would you like to say? I probably would say... Um... The, the most surprising me about my research from my research is the heterogeneity of the MECFS. And um, I, we are a small team at the University of Sunshine Coast, and we have looked at the dyna dynamic brain blood flow, autonomic function, and neural inflammations in MECFS. And um, as a group, patient, MECFS patient always show a clear um, abnormalities across these uh, systems. Yet none of these barriers alone define the, uh, the disease. So that tells me is MECFS is not a single disease, but with, with 
it is a disease with different biological subtypes. So now our question is not just what's wrong, but what other pathways are impaired in this person? So what I want to share from our research is MECFS probably is not one thing. It's many biological pathways and um, we do need to collect those uh, data together and um, you know pass out the subtypes. And finally, I will also take this opportunity to appreciate solo ME. And I want to say to them, if I um, you know, met any patient participant or any patient, I would say is you are not alone because um, you know, in Australia, we now I don't I cannot speak for US, but in Australia, we now um, emphasize that research have to engage with consumers. We have to listen to the consumers. So I want to say is you are not alone. Uh, more and more researchers uh, listen to the patient, listen to the consumers. And then we have the you know organizations like Sologamy. In Australia, we have uh, Imagine Australia. And um, we have those um, you know, organizations, more and more those organizations and more researchers are listen to you. And um, you know, we together should be able to solve this problem. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you spending your time here with us today.